Okay, last up in this session, we have Timothée Odeberg presenting regular language type inference with term rewriting. Hello everyone, my name is Timothée Odeberg and in this presentation I will be talking about our latest work on the automatic verification of higher order functional programs where we designed a regular language type inference system using term rewriting. This is a joint work with Thomas Genet and Thomas Jensen at the French Institute for Research in Computer Science. And the technique that we have developed is dedicated to the fully automatic verification of higher order functional program processing algebraic data types. What you see on this slide is an example of what we want to achieve. On the left side is the user input. It is a higher order functional program written for the purpose of the presentation in OCaml. It defines a recursive function, sort, that implements the insertion sort algorithm, taking as parameter the comparison function, and also a sorted predicate that verifies that the list is indeed sorted according to the same input comparison function. The right side shows that we imagine could be the user interface. Here the user can type in the property he wants to verify. So here, for example, we want to verify that for all list L, the output of the sort function is it in sorted according to the corresponding predicate. Note that the property uses predicates that are defined in the program, and without any more information, without annotation, we are able to check if the property is verified or find a counter example. If the property cannot be verified with a regular abstraction of the program, it will diverge. To understand why our contribution was necessary and how it relates to other higher order functional program verification techniques, I like to place every technique on this diagram. Many properties can be verified by simplifying or abstracting the behavior of the input program in a certain way. So we can classify verification techniques according to the abstraction they can generate. On the bottom, we put techniques that can verify properties with any regular abstraction. On the top, we put techniques that can verify property with any abstraction. Overall, this axis measures the range of properties that can be verified by the technique. From left to right, we measure how much a user is active during the verification. On the left, we have fully automated techniques, and on the right, manual techniques. Proof assistants such as Koch or Isabel HOL can be placed in this region. They can verify a large range of properties, but require a lot of manual work. Refinement types inference techniques, which can be seen in liquid types or F-star, require less manual work. The user only needs to give some hints, usually as program type annotation. However, the range of verifiable properties is reduced. Fully automated techniques have been developed around higher order model checking, predicate abstraction and more, these techniques do not require any annotations, but mainly focus on relational properties over numerical data types, and are generally not good at verifying regular properties over algebraic data types. There have been some attempts in the fully automatic verification of regular properties, including our previous work teambook, however these techniques are incomplete and not scalable. In our paper, we propose a new technique that is complete on regular properties and modular to scale better. In our work, we use term rewriting systems to model programs and their semantics, and we use regular language of terms as types, which we are able to automatically infer using a regular invariant learning technique. Before I detail this type inference technique, let's start by an introduction of our theoretical frameworks terms, language, and rewriting systems. A term is a label tree that we usually represent like this. It is composed of a symbol, f, living in a ranked alphabet, and n subterms, t1 to tn, where n is the arity of the symbol f. We call a pattern a term that has variable in it. Terms are useful to represent functional language expressions. This slide shows how OCaml expression can be translated into terms. Constants do not change, they have no subterms, unless it is a number, in which case we represent it by a tree using Peano's number representation. Functions application can be translated into a term where the arity of the symbol is the arity of the function, and subterms are parameters. However, this representation does not allow partial application of f, so instead we use the special at symbol to represent a functional application, 
which takes the function and its first parameter. Control structures, such as the if then else, are simply represented as terms. Finally, late bindings and anonymous functions are erased, leaving only the bound body. Here, k. This is because the program's logic is preserved elsewhere as a term rewriting system. A term rewriting system defines a set of rewriting rules between patterns that encode the program's logic. Here is an example of the OCaml program defining the sorted predicate function on top, translated into a rewriting system on the bottom. Because there are a lot of function applications, you see a lot of at symbols, which takes a lot of room and is hard to read. To simplify, we will write a space between the function and its parameters instead of at, just like this. Underline elements are the variables of the patterns. We see that each pattern matching rules on the top is translated into one or more rewriting rules on the bottom. A writing system can also be used to describe a regular language of terms as tree automata. Here is, for instance, on the right, the tree automaton recognizing every natural number, which can be used to partially represent the int type in OCaml. The rewriting rule defines that 0 rewrites into int because it is an int, and s of int, a successor, is also an int. In fact, tree automata can model any algebraic data type of OCaml. Here is the tree automaton for the following type of integer list. It defines two more rules for nil and cons that closely match the OCaml type definition. Tree automata can even represent regular languages that are not possible to define in OCaml. For instance, here is the tree automaton recognizing even numbers. This can be seen as the subtype of int. In our case, we call it a regular language type. Now that we are familiarized with rewriting systems and regular language types, let's dive into our verification technique. Remember that in our initial example, the user wants to verify that in his program for all list L, the output of sort L is sorted according to the corresponding predicate. In our verification settings, this problem is first translated into a rewriting problem. Here, it states that for all term L in the regular language of lists, and for all term V, if the input term rewrites into V, then V must be equal to true. In particular, it cannot be false. The list must be sorted. The arrow relation is defined by the term writing system translated from the input program. As we have seen earlier, regular languages can be seen as types. So we then translate our problem into a type checking problem where we need to check that the following term is well typed using regular language types. The overall target type is a regular language containing only the term true. Note that to check that, we will need to infer the appropriate intermediate type for sort L, since it is not given. From the partially typed given input term on the right, the type checking algorithm is defined as follows. First, we extract a type signature for the top pot symbol, sorted. We know the expected output type, true. Constant values such as the comparison function, CMP, are typed with themselves and can be reported directly on the signature. We complete the blanks in the signature using our type inference procedure. We find that to output true, the input list must be sorted, which is represented by the regular language name sorted. We propagate back what we have found and check that it matches the initial type information, and then we repeat the same procedure with the subterm. Here we need to check sort L. We again extract the template signature for sort. Here we already have all the type information about sort, we just need to check it. The algorithm stops when all the types have been found or when a type error occurs when there is a contradiction. Of course, everything is built on top of our type inference procedure, which has been able to find the regular language of sorted lists. Let's see how this procedure works. The problem is as follows. As input, we have a rewriting system, a symbol f, and an output regular language type o. We want to find every input type a1 to an, such that every term f t1 to tn is typed with o, when each ti is typed with ai. This can be summarized with the following abstract rewriting rule for f. 
For instance, let's consider the following rewriting system, defining the recursive function even, deciding if a number is even or not. We want to know for which input regular language type this function returns true. So here our target output type contains only true. The expected output of the procedure is a partial abstraction of the input term rewriting system focusing on even that tells us that even returns true for every even number. The new type even is computed during the analysis. For recursive functions such as this one, the type inference is done using an invariant learning procedure. In our paper, we define a counter-example guided regular invariant learning procedure based on three automata completion and SMT solving. It consists in repeating four steps until it finds a solution or a counter-example. Step 1, we experiment. We evaluate some terms of the form f of t1 to tn, where f is the analyzed symbol and t1 to tn some random input values. We do that efficiently using the three automata completion algorithm. We then observe the result of our experiment and deduce some constraints on the language we are learning. We then make an hypothesis. By using a, an SMT solver, we solve the constraints which generate an abstraction of the program execution. This gives us a possible regular language solution. We check the correctness of the abstraction by checking its completeness with regard to the rewriting system and the input domain. If it is, we are done, and if it isn't, we continue by doing more experiments. To illustrate the procedure, let's take back the even function example. First, we experiment with the values 0, 1 and 2 that are recognized in this automaton by the states x0, x1, x2. Using the three automata completion, we know that even of 0 and even of 2 rewrite to true. This is encoded by the following rules. If we only use this information, then we cannot observe the constraints. Every tested value so far rewrites to true. As a consequence, if everything rewrites to true, then there is no point in separating x0 from x1 from x2. A solution to our empty constraint system is to merge them together into a new state to zero. By applying this substitution in the automaton, we get a candidate abstraction for our rewriting system where even applied to any number returns true. Of course, this does not pass the test. Every input value for even is represented, but some rewriting rules are not used. In particular, this abstraction misses the fact that even of one rewrites to false. So we cannot stop here. To continue, we add even of 1 in our experiment. It rewrites to false. This time, we observe that in order to separate true from false, we need to have x0 different from x2 and x1 different from x2. By solving this new constraint system, we make a new hypothesis in which x0 and x2 are equals away from x1. If we look closely, we can notice that this new potential abstraction separates even and odd numbers, which is exactly what we want. And this time, every input value is represented, and every possible rewriting rule is used. So we can stop the analysis here, we have found an abstraction that gives us the correct input type for the output true, which is a new language even, recognizing even numbers. We have proved that this procedure is regularly complete, as it can learn any regular language, and complete in refutation. We have implemented it in OCaml in a new version of Teambook and tested it on more than 80 problems. When possible, we compare the performances with the previous version of Teambook. We thought that it is in average a second slower than Teambook 3, which can be explained by an overhead due to our typing facility. However, in the subset of problems on which we could compare, our implementation could handle 16% more problems without timing out. Surprisingly, the greatest improvement is in the memory usage, where in the worst case, Teambook 3 would consume several gigabytes of memory to solve some problems, where we never got past 40 megabytes. This is mostly due to our modular type system approach that allows us to split the problem into smaller parts. Thank you for listening, and don't hesitate to download the source code, which is available on our GitLab at the address below. Okay, thanks Timothée, um, uh, who is available in the New York Time Band for question and answer.